Welcome to Etcha, I'm Ben, and today we are going to answer the question, how can you know if you're in a courtly romance? This is how I imagine things went in the 12th century. Between the duties of counting coppers, attending tournaments, waging war, and beheading your enemies, the courtiers, or lords and ladies of the court, would lounge around and regale each other with stories of adventure, love, romance, and danger. Among these esteemed storytellers was Marie de France, the first woman to have successfully written in the vernacular. Now, who exactly was Marie de France? Was she Marie, the eighth Norman child of Walleran de Morlan? Marie, abbess of Shaftesbury? Mary, abbess of Reading? Whomever this woman was, she brought us one of the most celebrated collections of courtly romances, The Lay of Marie de France. Twelve stories grace this great collection, but what better story to answer our question than that of Lanville, the knight of King Arthur's court? Now, Lanville was not the most liked in King Arthur's court, but because he was a knight, people pretended to like him, even though if he died, they really wouldn't care. One day, when Lanval was on leave, he laid down in a meadow, and when he looked to the horizon, he saw two maidens dressed in purple coming his way. These ma- ah, someone's here. My sister just uh, sent me something for my birthday, even though my birthday was like a month ago, but hey. What do we got? Let's see what it is. <laughs> nice. I actually didn't have a lunch bag. Now I do. <laughs> this is gonna be awesome. One day when Landball was on leave, he laid down in a meadow. When he looked to the horizon, he saw two beautiful maidens coming his way. They were dressed in purple. They led him to a lavish tent, and when he went inside, he saw what he thought to be the most beautiful woman in the world. Moreover, she was the most beautiful woman in the world. Love's spark pricked him so that his heart was set alight, and he said to her, Fair lady, if it were to please you to grant me the joy of wanting to love me, you could ask nothing that I would not do as best as I could, be it foolish or wise. I shall do as you bid, and abandon all others for you. I never want to leave you, and this is what I most desire. She gave him her love and her body, and anything he asked for, and she asked only one thing that he keep their love a secret. And he agreed. And later, in the Queen's court, Lanval removed himself from all the other knights to pine away after his beloved. And when the Queen saw that handsome Lanval was alone, she took advantage of the situation. And she went to him and implored him. She asked, if he would come with her, because he was all that she wanted. When Lanville rejected the queen, his eyes only for his beloved, the queen then accused him of diddling with the knight's trainees, thus damning the king to hell. What Lanville did next would haunt him for ages. He told the queen that his beloved's most lowly and ugliest servant was more beautiful than the queen herself. Bum hurt at Lanval's comment, the queen ran off to her quarters crying, and when King Arthur came and saw that his wife was crying, he asked what was wrong, and the queen lied. She told Arthur that Lanval had come onto her, and had told her that his own beloved, her servants, were more beautiful than she. Now this angered King Arthur, and King Arthur went off and charged Lanval with treason against the High Court. Now the charge was this. If Lanval 
could not prove his claim about the queen's beauty, the king himself would behead Lanval or burn him to death, whichever he felt like at the time. Now when the time came for the trial, and Lanval was in his room pining away for his beloved, there came two maidens, dressed in purple, some of the most beautiful women to have ever graced King Arthur's court. More beautiful, it is said, than the queen herself. And the knights, in their joy, ran to Lanval and said, Lanval, one of these two must be your beloved. Lanval only had to glance up and say, no, neither of those. And as the trial continued, Lanval, in his quarters, pleaded with his beloved to come, yet heard no answer. Then two more maidens, on white horses, beautiful, more beautiful than the last, rode into King Arthur's court. And the knights said, one of these two must be Lanval's beloved. They ran to Lanval, and Lanval just said, no, neither of those. When the trial was about to conclude, a woman came riding in on one of the most beautiful white steeds in the land. Yet, this steed paled in comparison to her rider, the most beautiful woman in the world. And the knights ran to Lanval and said, Come, we believe there is a woman to see you. And when Lanval saw the woman, his face went red, and he said, I hardly care if anyone should kill me, for my cure is in seeing her. Then his beloved approached the king, drew her sword, and beheaded him, grabbing his bloody head, dripping blood everywhere, and declared, The king is dead! Long live the king! The end. Just kidding. That's the Hollywood version. Actually, she said, You should know that the queen was wrong, as he never sought her love. As regards to the boast he made, if he can be acquitted by me, let your barons release him. At this, Lanval hopped onto her horse, her beautiful white steed, and they rode off to Avalon, the mystical isle, where nobody saw them ever again. The end. Now again, the question is, how can you tell if you are in a courtly romance? Either get the book yourself, or re-watch this video, and see if you can find these rules. That which is not freely given by the object of one's love loses its savor. Only the most urgent circumstances should deprive one of love. Only the insistence of love can motivate one to love. Love cannot coexist with avarice. True love excludes all from its embrace but the beloved. Public revelation of love will kill it, in most cases. The lover's every deed is performed with the thought of his beloved in mind. There is no such thing as too much of the pleasures of the beloved. The thought of the beloved never leaves the true lover. <laughs> now is the part of the show where you subscribe, like, or comment down below. And thanks for watching.